Yeah, we can see the can see it. Open it up. Okay. Sorry, guys, it always takes that moment of, you know, sharing your screen and then getting it all up and hoping that it's going to go okay. So this evening, I'm going to talk to you about thriving and gaining independence as a teenager. And I suppose what I'm going to talk about is applicable to all teenagers, but also, um, I suppose, especially so for teenagers with epilepsy, so that you've got a more awareness and understanding of what's going to help you to thrive and to be as independent as, po independent as possible. So that's the objectives of it for this evening. So I suppose what I'm going to introduce, first of all, is a little bit about the brain skills that actually help children and teenagers to get things done. So when, for any of the parents here who are listening, okay, when you think about your children doing things, okay, from anything from like asking a three-year-old to go and get their shoes to asking your 16-year-old to make the breakfast, in order to do either of those activities, it's actually brain skills that help us to do them. And when we think about the brain skills that are involved in all those real simple everyday activities like brushing your teeth, getting ready, getting out for work, getting out for school, organizing to go to any leisure activities like swimming or taking your medications, all of those everyday activities that we're involved in, they involve a lot of brain skills, which we call your executive functions. And they're all kind of like the frontal lobes, ones that we kind of think of up here, okay? So some of those skills that are involved, they involve working memory. So you know, like when Liz was talking earlier about like that you might forget or that you might have difficulties with forgetting things, okay? That can happen all of us, and that's our working memory. So working memory helps us to just remember those short little bits of like, you know, what we need to do when we hear an instruction. So sometimes that can be a little bit tricky for all of us, particularly if you're tired or, you know, it's the end of the day. And um, those things can get a little bit trickier for us. Initiation is being able to start something. So for yeah. Anya, sorry for interrupting you. Um, your slide isn't sharing for me, so I'm just wondering, is it sharing for everybody else? Veronica, maybe you could see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. It's okay, That's is it. it? That's great. Oh, perfect. Brilliant. Super. Thanks, Tara. Um, so initiation is that piece of actually being able to start things, okay? So for any child and teenager, what is one of the most annoying things? Only your parents telling you to come on, start your homework, you know, eat your dinner, take your medication. So that's initiation of actually starting things, okay? But it's a brain skill. Um, for us as adults, it's not always that easy either. As an adult, how many times do you not want to start something where you procrastinate over it? and you hang on, but then you're like, oh, I better actually get going and get doing it. OK, so that's what kicks in then and we actually start. So then we usually typically organize and we'll plan out what we have to do. And often that organization is it's very subtle. We don't see it happening. So it's the steps of, OK, you actually need to get out the cereal, the milk, the bowl, the spoon in order to actually get your own breakfast to get it done. So we need to organize it and plan it. The same with actually as like when we're thinking about taking medication, you kind of need to organize and have a plan about how are you going to take it? What if your routine is to take it, you know, when you actually after brushing your teeth, does that mean you keep your medication in your bedroom um, and that it's near your locker so that you can see it? Or does that mean that it's in the kitchen and you keep it, you know, on the worktop so that you can actually see it? So that piece around organization and planning as well. Emotional control is also a brain skill. And that's another one of like those executive functioning skills that really helps us during the day to keep our emotions in check. So when you think about it in home life, OK, if I think about um, this afternoon, we were joking before the webinar started. Um, I was rushing to get my kids out the door. There was a camogie and a hurling match. Neither of them wanted to leave or go. Neither of them wanted to eat a dinner. And needless to say, emotional control wasn't great because they were both like, oh, I don't want to go. It's horrible out. 
and they were you know just pretty normally grumpy to me so that's emotional control that's the bit of actually being able to control your emotions they weren't they were just being a bit grumpy but that's okay because I expect that um because I wouldn't particularly want to go out in the rain this evening either or the cold but in other situations, we want to be able to control our emotions maybe more effectively, right? So like in the school situation of not reacting to something that's said or to happens. So that piece of being able to control our emotions. And often one of the things that you might find is that, you know, you control your emotions maybe really well in school or with friends and with peers. But then you come home and it's just like you can't help it. But you might be quite cranky or narky or tired or whatever it is and your parents and family might get the brunt of it so it's just always about having awareness around that piece around our emotional control when do we tend to be snappy with others and having insight into it because then that's what helps us to get strategies of okay actually when I come home from school I need a break I don't want to talk to anybody self-monitoring is another really important brain skill and that helps us to check, have I done what I was supposed to do? Did I actually take my medication? Did I put my school books back into my bag? Have I got my lunch? Have I actually left out clothes that I need for tomorrow? All those things that we just literally, we don't even realize that we're self-monitoring. Like normally on a webinar, I might self-monitor at the very start and say, can everybody hear me? Put up your hand if you can't. This evening, I kind of forgot because I know that Veronica and Tara are there. So they're doing the self-monitoring for me. So I didn't even think to ask it. Time management. Time management is a really, really complex brain skill, okay? And it's one of those ones that often we take it very intuitively, okay? Some people are brilliant at time management and they have a really good sense of like how long it takes, okay? But have you ever overestimated or underestimated the time that it takes to complete thing, something and think you'll have that done in two minutes and then you realize oh an hour later that you haven't or vice versa and then finally another brain skill that really impacts how we get things done is that bit about being able to think flexibly so if it doesn't work out can you come up with other ideas of how to do it or how to fix it or do you tend to get stuck and abandon it and walk away so the profile then of not being able to get things done that you might recognize for yourself or for any parents here that you might recognize for um, your children and for any of the teenagers here, watch this as well to see what do you recognize for your parents? Because we all have these executive functioning skills and in adolescence, there's a huge growth. So we think of growth kind of, and we think of it often physically in a height and how we're going, but the brain is really, really developing during adolescence, okay? And these skills are really, really coming to fore and really developing. And that's what allows us to become much more independent. So watch your parents as well and see like, which ones are they good at? And which ones actually are they maybe not so good at? Because we all have strengths and we all have weaknesses in this area. So do you know, ever find it hard to start things? Do you forget your belongings? Like, you know, stuff for school, stuff for any outside school activities or just in general? Do you have trouble keeping your desk tidy or your bedroom tidy? Even though I probably shouldn't say bedroom, that's not fair because bedrooms I kind of never really touch because I'm like, that's people's own space. So it's not one that I'm actually going to go near really. But your school bag, your locker, those things. Do you ever find it tricky to plan out tasks, to know exactly what you need to do? Like I remember one guy saying to me once that anytime he goes away for a weekend, um, with his friend, he could often have maybe three jumpers, but no coat or one pair of jeans, but no spare underwear. Um, and he was able to laugh about it and go, look, it's not a really a big deal because it always works out OK. But we were able to kind of go, OK, planning is the bit that catches you then. Do you ever find that you need a lot of prompts and reminders with things or maybe you don't notice it, but do you ever notice that maybe your parents or teachers or other adults are prompting you and reminding you a lot, okay? Do you ever get frustrated easily? Because that's emotional control, do things annoy you? Or do you get stressed about going places or doing things? And that might present as just kind of like 
Do you ever notice and watch for yourself? Do you ever get grumpy with the people around you before you have to go places or not want to go places? Because actually it might be the planning piece that is making it stressful. Do you ever find it difficult around keeping time? So like meeting friends on time, texting people back on time, um, replying to different things or actually being places or being ready for things on time or leaving tasks to the last minute. Do you ever notice that you're a real kind of like last minute person? And that's OK sometimes, but it can also catch us a lot in other situations. And you ever find it difficult to switch between tasks and activities? So if you're doing something that you really enjoy, like, you know, if you're on your phone or something, do you find it difficult to then stop that and maybe start something else? Or vice versa, if you're really into, you know, drawing or reading or like have a favorite activity, do you find it hard to switch between, between things and move on to the next thing? So you can see that these brain skills support us to get things done. So they do all the heavy lifting. They are really, really important. And often that's why knowledge about these executive functioning skills is really important because it can challenge a lot of the labels that are given to young people. So somebody might kind of describe and often I would hear maybe teachers say this or other people um, that might work with people just because they're not aware that actually the challenges might be around executive functioning skills because you can't see it. It's what's going on inside our heads and say, oh, they're a bit lazy, they're bored, they're unmotivated. Um, they're a real daydreamer or they're defiant or they're a bit of a messer. And these are often labels that are giving because people see maybe an outside behavior, but they don't realize the reason for it. Because being unmotivated might actually just mean that I don't know where to start or presenting that I look like I'm being lazy might be just that I don't know how to plan out the activity. So actually I haven't done anything for the upcoming project in school. Um, and it's not that I'm lazy and that I don't actually want to tidy up after myself, but I actually don't have a clue how to tidy up. What does that actually mean? So as we've spoken a lot about already, symptoms of executive functioning difficulties that you might notice as a teenager is that you might refuse to do your homework or you don't want to do it. And the reason might be that you actually just don't know how to get started. And the skill that's needed there is task initiation. So tonight I'm going to look a lot around that piece of the skills that are needed because these are brain skills that we need to train and practice. So the only way to develop them is practice and exposure little by little. Another symptom that we might see is that if you're forgetting or losing your belongings a lot, the reason might be that you don't have a system in place to keep track of papers or books or binders or appointments or assignments that you have to do. So the skill that we need to look at then is organization. And that's what, so we wanna move away from thinking around the symptoms and kind of like what we're seeing as the difficulties to going, okay, what do we need to practice and build on? And that's the skills that's needed. Another symptom that we might see is that you're never ready on time or unaware that you need to hurry on or kind of get a move on. And the reason might be that there isn't any strategies in place for being aware of time. So we want to look then at developing time management skills. Another symptom that you might see is procrastination, that last minute panic, that rush to get out the door, stress. And the reason is that maybe you don't know how to break tasks down into chunks and sequences and work them backwards. So that's all about planning. And then finally, the last symptom that we might see is that piece around being easily distracted. And it might be that you don't have strategies that help to maintain focus and resist distractions. So the skill that's needed is attention. So as I said, these executive functioning skills, they start to build in the early years as real growth spurts, kind of like from the ages of three to five. Can you think about it? Under three, we don't really expect young children to be that independent. We know that you often kind of have to put on their coat, their shoes, their socks and actually do it. Whereas by five, kids will actually start to do all of that for themselves as they're going into primary school. But now as a teenager, if your parent starts to put on your coat for you, you'd be horrified. So it's that bit that we can really see there's been such a growth in those brain skills and that you're able to actually do so much more. 
But as these brain skills really develop between the ages of 12 onwards, and they, they say that they don't stop developing until the age of 25 to 29, but it's like there's so much brain growth at this stage, really around working memory, really around planning and organizing. And that's what gives us independence and autonomy, because we can remember to do things and plan them out ourselves. I say ourselves, I'm clearly nowhere near like a teenager. Um, so when we look at the activities then that we expect, you know, children to be able to engage in. So this is kind of here for, I'm sure the slides will be available as well for any of you afterwards. I don't want to take you through too long of them because I'm just conscious of the time. It's 10 to 8. So we're thinking like from 6 to 7, like that actually young children would be able to put away shopping, help with simple daily chores, you know, to actually bathe um, themselves as well. And then as we go up along to 8 to 9, so for any of you here this evening that are maybe some of you here are 10 and upwards or maybe it is more in that real teenage years, but like by 14 to 17 year olds, we're expecting that actually, and this sometimes seems so far ahead, like how many of us let a 14 year old put the diesel or the petrol in the car. But when you're thinking about all of these everyday tasks that are here, each and every one of these tasks use complex brain skills. So if we want to give an opportunity to develop how to start something and how to self-monitor, is there anything better than learning how to push, you know, the diesel or the petrol in a car? Because you have to learn how to start to actually do it. Then you have to really focus your attention and you have to really self-monitor when you want to stop, be it by the amount of money that you want to spend or when it's actually full. Same with making appointments for the dentist, you know, minding a younger brother or sister, going on public transport and having to read the timetable, like what time will the bus arrive at? You know, where do I get off? So all of these involve high levels of planning, organisation. So sometimes it's the most basic activities that you'll be doing in your everyday life that are actually going to help to build your independence as a young adult and as a teenager. And I suppose then thinking as well about like 17 to 21 year olds, that bit about actually learning about like banking, online banking, using a bank card. Like I would have worked in the university system um, going back a number of years ago. And it was often really interesting. Like I met some lovely young people when they would come into university. And if I could have met them when they were 14, it would have been fabulous because some of the challenges that they were presenting when they came to university among struggling maybe with like living in shared accommodation and knowing how to cook meals and prep them on their own, knowing actually how to ask for help when they couldn't figure out their lecture notes or where to be for when like, you know, the room would change on a, on a lecture. So those are the everyday life skills that we really want to start practicing in teenage years so that actually by the time you're hitting 21, that you're really competent and independent with them. So why do we want you as teenagers to improve your ability to organize and self-manage? It's not just so that it takes kind of like a load off your parents and other family members. And it's not just about like you helping out. It's actually about that we know, I suppose, from the research that when we do things for ourselves, when we're independent and autonomous, actually it really enhances our well-being. We have much greater confidence in ourselves because we know that we're capable and that we can achieve and it really enhances our self-esteem. So independent living skills, they have a huge knock on effect as well on our academic achievement. So like the smallest things of like, actually, you know, do you ever make the cup of coffee or the cup of tea for your, for whoever's at home when you're sitting down at night time? But it's that sense of that actually you can give back and that you can self-manage it and provide and do for somebody else as well as yourself. So... The next bit then about the tips. OK, so I've spoken a lot around like, you know, what these brain skills are and how they help us to get things done. And what about then if you do have struggles in certain areas? So the first tip that I'm going to say to you tonight is it's all about awareness and understanding. So recognize your strengths. OK, 
What are you good at? What do you like to do? What are you independent with at the moment at home and in school? OK, because you can be guaranteed that you have lovely strengths in certain areas. And then look at the challenges. And you know, when I said to you earlier, what did your parents do? For any of the parents here, it's also really nice for our young people to hear us talk as parents about, you know, what we're not great at. And for them to actually be able to recognize that, you know, none of us are perfect and none of us do. I am lethal for being last minute. I'm sure Tara laughed when she, maybe she didn't laugh. Maybe she was like, seriously, when she got my presentation at four o'clock today. So I know it's something that it will be a challenge for me is that like, I will always get my presentations done, but I just tend to leave them to the last minute. But I'm aware of that. So today I knew that I had three hours left. I had the afternoon to make sure that I had my presentation ready. So you might say that it's a challenge for me, or you might say, actually, maybe I had it well planned out. OK, so it's all about awareness and understanding ourselves. Like, what do we tend to do? And the challenges typically are those pieces where you're starting to notice that, like, maybe you might be getting in a little bit of trouble over something. Maybe, you know, adults around you are kind of annoying you and nagging. So if you're noticing that, that's often a challenge, maybe for you as a teenager, but also for the people around you. And sit down together and have a chat about it and say, look, I know I'm great at this bit, but actually, yeah, I know I'm always struggling to get out the time in the morning for school or to get up. Or actually that I do notice that you're the one remembering and reminding me to take my medication. And then the next tip then is that once you looked at that piece around the awareness and the understanding, is the recognition. Recognize what do you need to target and try to train that skill in order to enhance your organization or your time management skill or your working memory. And we'll get to the strategies that will help that. So just the first bit is just being really gentle and recognizing what are the everyday life activities that actually are a priority for you and that you need to train because it's brain training and it's practice. So tip three then is goal setting. So what is it for you at uh, the moment as a teenager? What is your goal? And you may not be thinking like that might seem like such a, an abstract statement even like oh, what is your goal? But what is it that maybe you want to work on or improve or what bothers you? Or what are your strengths that you want to build on and increase your independence there? Is it that actually, you know, on a Friday evening, you want to start making dinner because actually you want pizza on a Friday evening and your parents never make it? Is there something that you want to build on? Because it's those pieces, those activities that we're interested in that will just, and they all just span out into other areas of our life. So thinking about your strengths and how you can build on it. What is tricky for you or others in your family or in school? Is it that piece around homework and learning? And then what, if that is, then you would notice what's tricky, okay? It's just identifying that so that we can look and say, what's the goal? So the goal may not be just we'll say like that actually to get my homework done by five o'clock. It might be actually when you sit down that actually the goal is to maybe start your homework by half past three or start your homework by five o'clock and then planning it out okay so once you can identify that piece that's the that's the hardest piece and that's often where you might need a little bit of help and support for somebody else sometimes it might be your parents that help you to chat through that but sometimes it might also be like a guidance counsellor in school or if you do access any other therapies, it might be that you chat that out with them because sometimes it depends on who's easier to chat it out with. And then one of the most important things, are you motivated? Do you want to improve and work on this? Do you want to build on this strength? So looking at that as well. The fourth tip then is brainstorming, okay? So once you've identified that kind of like key area or life skill that you want to work on or that um, aspect of maybe actually it is going to bed on time, whatever it is, OK, then we need to brainstorm it because brainstorming is all around problem solving. 
planning it out and it helps us to organize the activity. Because when you think about it, we don't realize that we're actually brainstorming all the time. And sometimes as teenagers, you may not see your parents do it, okay? They might just arrive and have the activity finished, okay? But you don't realize that in their head, they've actually been doing all this brainstorming. And as adults, we often forget that actually your brain as a teenager is developing and growing. We need to actually tell you we're in the middle of brainstorming, not actually just arrive at the answer, okay? So brainstorming is all that piece around going, okay, what do we need to do actually? Okay, so we are gonna go away camping for the weekend. What are we gonna, what do you wanna do when we go camping? So having that chat about problem solving it, you know, whereabouts will we go camping? Who will be there? What's involved in it? Who's gonna take charge of the packing? Who's gonna take charge of like organizing the car? All of those things, whatever that activity is, Will you invite a friend to come with you? Won't you? Is it just our family? So doing that verbal piece is really important. And especially for us as adults to model that for young people so that we can help them to build the skills. Tip five then is the planning and the problem solving piece, okay? So we'll come to planning strategies in a second, right, okay? But think about when you're planning. Often, one of the biggest challenges about planning is that actually we don't troubleshoot it enough, okay? So you need to think about when you're planning that actually you're writing coding for a computer. Because if you've ever had any problems with a computer and not being able to sort it out, um, then you really know how tricky it is because actually you're just stuck because we haven't told the computer the correct step to do next, so it just does nothing. It'll just sit and just literally look at you because we haven't planned out and we haven't given the computer the right instructions, okay? And our brain is a little bit like that. For it to move on to the next step, for you to actually put your clothes into the laundry basket, we need to have planned out what does that mean. So it might actually mean that actually you have to actually pick up all the clothes that are on the floor and actually, you know, take them to the bathroom. But if we don't actually kind of like put all of that down into simple steps, we often miss out a couple of steps. So we might actually just pick up the clothes off the bedroom floor that maybe are, you know, closest to the door and forget about the ones that are under the bed and leave all the cups with drink there in the room. So there's all that bits. Always think about you're writing it for a computer code and then write it down, okay? Write down each step. Because once you've planned out each step, then you can put a time beside it and go, all right, okay, I actually do need to wake up at seven o'clock because you realize that actually I have to be gone out of the house by 7.45. So when we plan it, then we can troubleshoot and look at the problems like, okay, actually usually the problem is that by quarter to eight, I have my breakfast eaten, but actually I'm not dressed properly, my bag isn't ready, and then we're all arguing. So that's why it's so important. And like the lovely bit now is that like, for anyone who has a smartphone, I'm sure many of you do here tonight, is that you can do all of those to-do lists, pick an app that you like and actually write it all down into it so that it's there and you can go back to it each day. So with planning strategies then, a lot of it is around, we are so lucky now, we live in an era of technology and seeing what suits you, okay? So some people will set up an Alexa in the house or a similar device where actually the Alexa will remind you. So at half past seven, the Alexa will actually say, um, Anya, you need to um, brush your hair, you know, and that might be the cue for me going, OK, I need to hurry on actually to get my there. I, I suppose I speak about it as in having um, a daughter and for any of you, they have long hair. It's that bit of actually trying to get them out the door to school. Clearly, my daughter can't tie up her hair yet at the moment, which is lovely long hair. So it's that bit around what are the cues and where do you get caught? So what are the bit that catches you using your phone? Some people might actually prefer to write it down and literally have it on the fridge. Often, though, that does tend to be kind of the strategies that we'll use for young children. OK, so organize the environment specific <laughs> you can tell it's late i can't speak specific to the activity and to you so what suits your household what suits your school environment so you've got to organize 
each activity will be slightly different depending on the environment, okay? And it's only if you've got the right environment thing that you can actually do the activity correctly. So for some people, okay, this may look actually quite tidy or for others you might look at it and think, oh, that doesn't at all. But I suppose the key message here is that predictable supportive environments are real key to success. When they're predictable, it's easier for, uh, for us to plan and do things, okay? And to get on with other activities. When it's unpredictable, it's much harder for us to keep going through and to be focused. I'm sure as many of you will be in mainstream secondary school and all secondary school, schools are a really good environment that show that piece around being visually organized and labels, okay? So thinking for yourself then with organizational skills, schools label it and they organize it, why? Because they know actually that it works really well. So think about yourself, what do you need to organize and to label? What are the key things for you maybe, the belongings that you forget? Do you actually need to label them and put a cue in, you know, that like something that is in your homework journal or whatever it is that will actually help you to remember them? What are the cues that will help you to organize, label and remember things? Okay. Also, I suppose, as many of you will see, this is a really busy picture. I picked it intentionally because invite is the environment set up to support your independence, okay? So I'm not, I didn't go into huge detail around it tonight, but that piece around the sensory environment. So we take in so much information visually, you know, auditory, tactile. So is the environment well set up? If it's too noisy, it may be in the school setting or at home and there's a lot of distractions, both noise, visually, or even if you've just been exposed to them all day long, is it that actually then you need that break and you need to set up the environment to really support you? So is it that actually, if you're doing your homework, that you actually do need music to help you to calm and regulate? Or is it that actually you need a really quiet environment? Is it that actually, do you ever notice that you study better maybe in the after school study because it's really quiet and the environment is bland and less visually stimulating? But I suppose it's a whole other webinar in itself about being aware of our sensory preferences. So what do we find overstimulating? What do we find understimulating? And what's the right balance for us that helps us to get on and do things? Okay, so thinking about then keeping things predictable, organized and labeled. So use technology that you have available to you, like a smartphone, so that you can actually record things, put things in, make checklists. I suppose one of the most important things about using a device like that is that actually we know from the research that we have to use it consistently. So you need to set it up and make sure that it's a strategy that actually works for you. And then we need to get that strategy in place. So don't start with using checklists for everything, maybe. Just start with it for one thing. What is the checklist that you make or that phone reminder that you do? And then spend at least six weeks getting into the habit. Not that you dismiss the alarm, but actually that you attend to it and that you actually, be it that it is that you get up at that stage, take your medication, you know, turn off um, the television, whatever it is that you set the reminder for, that we don't dismiss it, that we actually do it. And we really have to train our brain to do that. Because if we train our brain to dismiss the alarm, that's what our brain will learn. That actually it's not a reminder to do it, it's a, a reminder to dismiss. So just be conscious of that, just start one thing at a time when you're setting up a reminders and really get that well. Label it so that you know exactly what it is, like you know exactly on that jar that it's Nutella. Like on the picture beside it, you can see, yeah, it's jelly beans, but you've no clue from it, like what flavor or taste any of them are. So make sure that it tells you exactly what it is when we're organizing it. Okay, seek help to organize. You know, parents are great. They will actually sit down once you've actually gone through it. 
maybe that piece as well about other people like other family members or people that you get on really well with in the school setting but we do need organizational tools and there's lots of them out there that we can use schedule time to review the plan and the activity so you know schedule a bit of time where you can actually sit down and look back and kind of have a chat about it be it yourself or somebody else not when you're busy and it's just after the activity but maybe like you know if you've been doing whatever it is like making your own breakfast um, on a Saturday morning or cooking the dinner at some stage or, or you know cutting the lawn or doing whatever activity it is or you know walking down to the skate park on your own schedule time to actually plan and, and monitor how did it go like when you got down to the skate park did you do what you said you did, you were going to? Did you actually text your parents to let you, them know that you were at the park? So just schedule, so that you can actually self-monitor and review the plan and the activity to know how are you getting on with it? And then if there's any difficulties, you can tweak that and you can change things. So in summary, thinking about like, I suppose I've put up the piece here for study and homework plan, but it can be any activity throughout the day. Identify the goal brainstorm it, plan it out, use a planning strategy and review it. Okay. And I suppose as we start to near the end, just remember it will go it will go wrong and there'll be a mess and you'll shout at each other. But then you'll kind of pick it back up and you start again. Okay. And that's life. That's the normal way that it goes. Because these are developmental skills or executive functioning skills. So they're growing, they're maturing, they're developing, okay? There's no magic wand. It's all about practice and training. So it's to have fun too and to laugh at it when it does go wrong. And don't forget, remember the piece as well of what do you enjoy, okay? Because remember that piece, it's not all about just the brain training of these skills. We also need to brain train the emotional control, that piece around emotional regulation. So time for when do you have a brain dump? And by that, I mean, when do you as an adolescent get to just kind of like sit down, kick back? What is that piece for you? Is it out walking your dog? Is it actually, you know, having a bath? Is it actually kicking a ball? What is the bit for you where you don't have to think? What's your time out? What's a meaningful activity for you? Because they're really important. If we've done all of this work around like developing our independent skills and bringing them on and being autonomous, then we need to think about what do we enjoy because the brain needs a break as well. And that enjoyment and happiness will also give us kind of like the energy to keep going. So the key take home messages are your brain is working really, really hard as a teenager. There's cognitive strategies that you can use, which I've said already around goal setting brainstorming, using checklists, reminders, visual labels, planning and reviewing together. But there's also emotional strategies that we need as well. And that's a piece about like parental and teacher understanding where you're coming from, what you, where your strengths are and where you want to improve and where you want to work on things. Also thinking about health and well-being activities in school and at home. So what gives you a break? What gives you time out? How are you going to support and implement those strategies on your own and with others? Time for a brain dump, time out after hard activities. And I suppose also I've put down there self-care as well for your parents because you're working hard as a teenager. But, you know, don't be afraid to prompt your parents as well to say, you know, mom, dad, you know, your aunt, sisters, brothers, like, guys, you need to take a bit of time out as well. You can't always be working hard. So, Wendy kind of prompt each other to take a bit of self-care. So thank you so much for listening. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. So thank you all guys. Thank you, Anya. That was fantastic and really, really comprehensive. Um, just has any, if anybody has questions, remember just to pop them into the chat box and the teenagers will be going into the breakout room with Anya and Marisa. Um, so if you have those questions and you can pop them in there to the chat box, we can use those to, to start discussions in the breakout room for with you. OK, so I'm going to hand you over to our next speaker, Marisa Connolly. Um, Marisa, you're very welcome here this evening and we're all looking forward to, to your talk as well. 
So we'd like to welcome Marisa here. <laughs> 